epilepsy warning for flashing lights and colors. You've heard of successful roller coaster makeovers, but what about the makeovers that went wrong? These are when parks attempt to make a ride better, but end up making it worse. There are so many instances of this happening to roller coasters that I decided to make a video about it. So as voted on by the fans, here are the top 10 worst roller coaster makeovers. Number 10, the stand-up trains on Extreme Roller at Missouri's Worlds of Fun. Just this year, we saw the rebirth of the stand-up coaster at SeaWorld Orlando, but the concept got its start all the way back in 1983. That year, Worlds of Fun officials partnered with American manufacturer Aero Hoss to add some new flair to one of the latter company's coasters. What they did was take their looping coaster scream roller and add prototype stand-up trains to it. Unfortunately, as is often the case with prototype designs, being the first of its kind was certainly problematic. As it turned out, the old ride's lift hill was unable to handle the heavier stand-up trains. Another issue with the trains was their center of gravity. Because it was vastly different from the old trains, it caused additional stress on the lift. The mechanical issues were so bad that the stand-up trains were removed after just one season. Arrow also attempted to put stand-up trains on what's now River King Mine Train at Six Flags St. Louis. After a tragic incident involving a passenger falling out of the vehicle though, those trains were also retired. Arrow then discontinued the stand-up trains, and they remain a brief but notable footnote in the company's history. Number 9. The Kumbach Trains on T3 at Kentucky Kingdom and Arkham Asylum Shock Therapy at Australia's Warner Brothers Movie World. Dutch manufacturer Kumbach has been a source of controversy among coaster enthusiasts. The company specializes in upgrading rides in a variety of ways, such as installing new braking and control systems. The company has also dipped their toes into ride vehicle design to mixed results. While their designs appear smooth and sleek at first glance, many have criticized them for providing uncomfortable ride experiences. This is especially the case for their inverted roller coaster trains. Kumbach has installed these trains on two now-defunct coasters, Arkham Asylum Shock Therapy and T3. Both of these coasters are suspended looping coaster models by fellow Dutch manufacturer Vacoma. This model is often criticized for rough, headbanging ride experiences. As such, the design of Kumbach's restraints is meant to prevent headbanging. There are no hard shoulder restraints right next to passengers' heads. However, these trains presented a different problem entirely. The lap bar, which went over passengers' thighs, was widely hated for being way too tight. Passengers of all different statures have labeled the restraint as a thigh crusher from the way it pressed down on people's legs. Even worse, the trains were rumored to cause significant wear on the track, which many have suggested led to the closures of both coasters they were installed on. However, it's worth noting that there is no official word on why these coasters closed. Either way though, even if the trains didn't damage the track, they were still hated by pretty much everyone. Even Kentucky Kingdom themselves regularly roasted the ride on their social media pages. You know you have a problem when even the park is telling you that a ride is bad. Number 8. Rotational Motions Trains on Cliffhanger at North Carolina's Ghost Town in the Sky Say what you want about the Kumbach trains, but at least they lasted a few years before their rides closed. With Cliffhanger's trains though, it was an even bigger disaster. First opening in 1988 as Red Devil, this coaster operated on the side of a mountain in North Carolina's Maggie Valley. Built by American manufacturer Hopkins Rides, this coaster operated all the way until the park's initial closure in 2002. Later on in 2007, officials planned to reopen the park. They also planned to reopen the coaster under the new name Cliffhanger. For the occasion, new trains were purchased from Tennessee-based manufacturer Rotational Motion. For those of you who have never heard of this company, neither have I. Despite the plans, the roller coaster wouldn't open in 2007 due to technical issues. It wouldn't be until 2009 that the ride opened with the new trains, but not so fast, because just two days after it reopened, the ride was shut down by inspectors. It turned out that a hairline crack was discovered in one of the train's frames, putting guests in serious danger. Though it did reopen in October that year, it was shut down again due to more unspecified technical issues. The park had reportedly considered buying a new train, but in 2009, officials had filed for bankruptcy. This was after spending $11 million on park improvements, and over half of which went towards the roller coaster. 
So yes, the park bought new trains that cracked after two days of operation and went bankrupt in the process. Nowadays, the park sits abandoned, with the disastrous train still on the property. But honestly, these things deserve to be on display in the Museum of Failure. Number 7. The Magnetic Brakes on Wild Mouse at England's Blackpool Pleasure Beach This coaster had a reputation as a rough and relentless ride experience, and it was also one of the most cherished roller coasters in Blackpool's history. First opening in 1958, this was one of only a few wooden Wild Mouse coasters that was still operating in the 2010s. Its intense laterals, thrilling dips, and near-miss moments with the structure made it a cult classic among coaster enthusiasts. On top of that, there were no restraints, with only a seatbelt holding riders in. This gave it an extra sense of danger that enthusiasts ate up like they were at a food truck festival. Around 2016, it was decided to modernize the coaster for better future operations. To do this, park officials eliminated the manual skid brake system and replaced it with a magnetic braking system in 2017. However, these brakes didn't work well with the coaster, and they caused an excess of downtime and unspecified technical issues. After just one season with the new braking system, the unthinkable happened. The coaster was suddenly demolished without any fanfare in 2018, which highly enraged the ride's fanbase. It's unknown if the braking system played a role in its closure, and there were already rumors that UK health and safety officials were looking to shut the ride down. Regardless, the braking system was an undeniable technical headache, and the fact that it failed to extend the coaster's life is especially worth noting. Number 6. The New Trains and Retracking on Wildcat at Connecticut's Lake Compounds First opening in 1927, this is one of the oldest American roller coasters still standing. Naturally, as wooden coasters get older, they need regular maintenance and upkeep. After almost a century of operation, the coaster had gotten pretty rough by the mid-2010s and was in desperate need of upgrades. So after the 2016 season, park officials brought in Canadian coaster company Martin & Vlumax to install a new control system. They also reconstructed the lift hill and completely retracked the layout. Not only that, but the park had contacted American manufacturer Great Coasters International to install Millennium Flyer trains on it. These are the same trains that are used on such acclaimed coasters as Mystic Timbers and Ghost Rider, so many enthusiasts were excited for the makeover. After a few delays, the ride eventually reopened to critical acclaim. Actually no, it opened to extremely negative reviews. I personally grew up with this coaster, and even I couldn't deny how painful it became. It's unknown whether there were miscommunications in the retracking process or an issue with the trains being incompatible with the layout. Either way though, when I rode this coaster two years ago, I was legitimately concerned that I had injured my lower back. This coaster became unbearably bouncy, jackhammering you into the seat relentlessly throughout the layout. After a couple of years of negative reviews, the park recently made the decision to retrack the coaster yet again. Doing this will require the ride's closure for the entire 2023 season. Hopefully when it reopens, I won't be concerned about spending the rest of my life as a hunchback after riding it. Number 5. The retheming of Rock and Roller Coaster to Avengers Assemble Flight Force at France's Walt Disney Studios Park. Disney has a mixed record of implementing intellectual properties into their parks in recent years. Some attractions, like Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind and Tron Light Cycle Power Run, are highly acclaimed. But for every success, there's a failure. In 2022, Disneyland Paris opened their new Avengers Campus area. This area was heavily criticized for being bland and uninspiring, looking more like an industrial shopping center than an exciting comic book themed land. Perhaps the most lambasted attraction to open was Avengers Assemble Flight Force. This ride was formerly known as Rockin' Roller Coaster, a clone of the famous ride at Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida. What Disney did was remove the Aerosmith theme and replace it with one based on the Avengers. Despite the initial hype though, this attraction was met with a swift backlash from both coaster enthusiasts and Marvel fans. Pretty much the only thing that was praised about this attraction was the Iron Man animatronic in the queue. Aside from that, the new theming on the coaster was cheap and hastily tacked on. Sure, there are a few small screens here and there, but most of the coaster takes place in complete darkness with hardly any theming or special effects. Many have also said that the storyline is hard to follow as well, and that the whole ride experience is a complete waste of time. The ride was clearly under-budgeted, and there are already rumors of it being refurbished again in the future. For now though, it remains one of the biggest butcherings of a Disney ride. And speaking of which, 
Number four, both rethemes of Space Mountain from the Earth to the Moon at France's Disneyland Paris. This is yet another coaster that's part of the Disneyland Paris Resort. Originally, this coaster opened in 1995 as Space Mountain from the Earth to the Moon. The original theme was inspired by the works of Jules Verne, with a steampunk style aesthetic, elaborate special effects, and onboard audio. This theme was highly acclaimed, and it's considered to be one of the best indoor roller coasters ever. Unfortunately, about a decade later, the coaster was given its first makeover, being retooled as Space Mountain Mission 2. This was done to boost park attendance by marketing it as a new attraction while keeping the coaster as a whole the same. Basically, they switched its Jules Verne theme to a generic sci-fi one. This change was heavily looked down upon by the ride's fans. But this backlash was nothing compared to the next makeover. In 2017, the ride was rethemed yet again to Star Wars Hyperspace Mountain Rebel Mission. The all-new experience was themed to the Star Wars franchise, and to say park fans were pissed off would be a complete understatement. The retheme was heavily criticized for being bland and uninspired. Many park fans felt that the Star Wars theme sucked the color and originality out of the ride, only to replace it with a plastered-on IP. Many view it as soulless compared to the old Jules Verne theme. Still though, the new ride does have its fans. In fact, I remember when I got into a bit of hilarious hot water with the fine folks over at Memulus for my previous assessment of it. Though its initial Jules Verne inspired theme would eventually be replaced by a less impressive Star Wars theme. Uh, excuse me? You've just, you've just opened oh, a can of worms. Oh, mate. Theme Park Crazy, you've just opened a can oh, of worms. Oh, mate. You wish, you, you, you're gonna wish, you're gonna regret saying oh, that. I'll turn it off, turn it off. Of course, this is all in good fun. But still, if you're a fan of this ride, feel free to comment down below. Number three, the structural adjustments and the new trains on Son of Beasts at Ohio's Kings Island. Ah yes, perhaps the most talked about defunct roller coaster in the enthusiast community. The good old abomination by the Roller Coaster Corporation of America has become internationally known for its dismal failure. First opening in 2000, this coaster was the tallest and fastest wooden coaster on earth. It was also the first wooden coaster to feature an inversion since the experimental days of the early 1900s. Sadly, what started off as a unique, record-breaking wooden coaster would end up being a major headache for everyone involved. And that was in addition to the literal headaches it caused with its jackhammeringly rough ride experience that was hard to read. The structure was poorly designed, and the layout consisted mostly of large milk toast helixes. Interestingly enough, the only part of the ride that was said to be good was the loop. This was due to it being made out of steel instead of wood, and being a hell of a lot smoother as a result but one good inversion doesn't make a good ride. Ever since it opened, this coaster faced a number of maintenance issues. Perhaps the biggest issue with the ride was how wobbly the structure was. To fix this, officials made modifications to the ride to stiffen the structure and decrease its movement. But making the structure stiffer made it harder to absorb the stress that the trains put on it. This led to an incident in 2006 where a wooden beam snapped, causing the track above to sag. This formed a pothole on said track, and when a train full of riders passed over it, everyone on board received a jolt that was so violent, they were all sent to the hospital. After the incident, the park decided to install lighter trains to lessen the stress on the structure. However, these new trains came with a major downside. Because they were lighter, they didn't have the momentum necessary to complete the loop. Because of this, Kings Island was forced to remove the best part of the ride. Without the loop, this was nothing more than a dull wooden coaster. Sure, it was still tall and fast, but what was the point of having records when the ride experience was total crap? After another incident where a woman claimed to suffer a brain injury, as well as further inspections, the park decided this coaster was not worth having around. So the ride was torn down in 2012, and later partially replaced by the inverted coaster Banshee. Number 2. The New Trains on Goliath at Massachusetts Six Flags New England Built by Vacoma, the giant inverted boomerang is widely considered to be the company's best early model. In the early 2000s, Six Flags had installed three of these coasters across their parks. Each one was named Deja Vu and given the exact same color scheme. But the one on this list was the one that first opened at Six Flags Magic Mountain. After about a decade of operation, this coaster was relocated to Six Flags New England for the 2012 season. There it was renamed Goliath and given a new train design. This was despite the original Vacoma trains being well received by riders. So why did Six Flags change the design of a train that wasn't functionally broken? 
To put it simply, it was because many guests couldn't figure out how to board it. The original trains had staggered seating, with each consecutive row having a pattern of two inner seats and two outer seats. This ride had a very specific boarding procedure. This method went as followed. Two people boarded the inside seats, one passenger walked around the inside seats to get to one of the staggered seats, and the fourth passenger simply boarded the last staggered seat. However, this proved to be confusing. In many occasions, people assumed all four seats were in the same row and cut people in line. This confusion led to hampered operations, and Six Flags aimed to fix that with the help of American manufacturer Premier Rides. The latter built a new train design that had standard rows of four, removing the confusion from the boarding process. But while it made the boarding less complicated, the entire ride experience was downgraded. These trains ran horribly on the track, with excessive headbanging galore. It wasn't uncommon to get off this ride with a headache or a sore collarbone. And if you were wearing sunglasses or earrings, you were in for a world of hurt. And as if that weren't bad enough, the coaster would regularly face downtime, and it was nearly impossible to get on board towards the end of its lifespan. After less than a decade in New England, the decision was made to tear this disastrous attraction down. Hardly any tears were shed, and fortunately, you can still experience what this ride would have been like if it didn't suck. An exact clone is currently operating at Idaho Silverwood with the old Vacoma trains, and many agree that it's a thousand times better than Goliath. Number 1. The New Train Design on Green Lantern First Flight at California's Six Flags Magic Mountain This attraction is often regarded as one of the worst roller coasters of all time. First opening in 2011, this Intamin Zaxpin model opened less than a month after the disastrous Green Lantern movie starring Ryan Reynolds. And talk about a fitting timeline, because this ride was also a disaster. Usually, the Zaxpin is considered to be a fun little roller coaster. However, Six Flags butchered the concept in its only North American installation. Shortly after the ride's opening, Six Flags apparently grew concerned about riders getting stuck upside down or facing the sky. It's unknown if this was a real issue with the Zaxpin's design or if it was just Six Flags officials catastrophizing. But either way, the ride vehicle soon received a major modification. While the original vehicle design was built to resemble a throwing star, Six Flags added more metal to the cars, making them resemble more of a circular shape. The additional metal made the vehicles heavier, which prevented them from flipping too much. Though this did apparently reduce the chance of passengers getting stuck in an awkward position, it had the drawback of making this coaster an unbearable chore to ride on. With less rotation, riders were often stuck facing in one direction during the hairpin drops. This caused passengers to slam into the over-the-shoulder restraints and the back of their seats. Even worse, passengers were often hit below the belt. This made it more like a stunt from a jackass movie than a roller coaster that was supposed to be fun. Plus, the ride had experienced numerous technical issues, making the entire installation of the coaster a blatant failure. Towards the end of the 2010s, the ride sat standing but not operating, although Six Flags did install new trim brakes and tested it a few times. This was because in 2019, there were plans to relocate the coaster to Canada's La Ronde for the 2020 season. But while the ride was put in storage there, its installation was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Soon enough, La Ronde decided to cancel the installation altogether and got rid of the coaster. Its current whereabouts are unknown, and considering its history, maybe that's for the best. Now it's time for the comment shoutout program. This is where I take 5 random comments from my previous video and read them out. These comments come from my video on Nightmare Underwater Animatronics. Ned Flanders says, Efteling, Fata Morgana, this dark boat ride has submerged fake crocodiles. These made me scared as a kid and wanted me to sit in the middle of the boat. Pufferfish Lover says, I live quite close by Monstro, around one and a half hour car ride. Every time I see him, I notice more details than the last time I went. It's just unbelievable how much detail was put into it. Also, when you are in the fairy tale forest and you can understand simple Dutch, go watch the children's puppet show between the donkey and the sprookesboom. It was surprisingly fun to watch. Blitzer1001 says, When I first went to visit the Efteling, Monstro was there and I was so afraid that we skipped the forest on the next time. Toast says, Yeah, those car wash animatronics are seriously wrong. And Burf90 says, Not at a theme park and not technically underwater, though the original one have been. But it's the only animatronic that ever actually scared me. 
I went to one of those museum animatronic shows that popped up after the first Jurassic Park movie was released. This one featured sea creatures and they had a 40 foot long mosasaur, huge mouth, lots of teeth. But it was only about as high as a person and right at eye level. Just as I walked past its head, the eye looked right at me and it turned its head towards me. Mouth open. Thinking of that still creeps me out to this day. The Mosasaur makes its movie debut in Jurassic World. If you want to see your words in my next video, leave a comment down below and it may be selected. Please note though that inflammatory or spam comments will not be read. Thank you all so much and if you want to support me on Patreon you can do so once again at the link in the description. Thanks for watching everyone. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. If you want to follow me on social media you can check out the links I put in the description. This is Theme Park Crazy and I'll see you all next time.